Little Goldina. Once upon a time, in a distant land, beyond towering mountains, lived a king and queen. They amassed wealth beyond imagination. Their riches overflowed like a golden river. Their longing for a child was answered with the birth of their beautiful daughter, Little Goldina, a baby with blue eyes, blonde hair, and a complexion as fascinating as strawberries and cream. In the luxurious kingdom, Little Goldina's world was bedecked with golden splendor. She reveled in golden dolls, savored meals on golden plates, and soaked knowledge from golden books. From today, a decree be passed that everything in the palace, from doormats to dinnerware, must be made of gold. Every nook and corner of the palace, down to doormats, must gleam with gold. As little Goldina grew, she found herself surrounded by golden splendor. But as their obsession with gold grew, a peculiar change began to sweep through the palace over time. Their skin. Took on a golden hue, and everyone started losing their natural skin tone. While the court embraced this change, the king and queen noticed a worrisome transformation in Goldina. Her skin too began to harden, losing its youthful softness. <sighs> My dear, our Goldina's transformation troubles me deeply. The more gold we acquired. The more we lost touch with what truly matters. Our precious daughter, once like a fresh rose, now shines like a golden medal. The court believes golden color is in fashion now. Even ladies paint their skin golden to fit in. Our once beautiful palace is now a shrine to gold, but this price seems a bit too much. We must seek guidance, someone wise who can help us save our daughter. The Hermit of the Dismal Cave. It said he possesses ancient knowledge. Tonight, in secrecy, we'll embark on a journey to find answers. In desperation, they embarked on a perilous journey to consult the Hermit of the Dismal Cave, whose wisdom was whispered through the ages. What brings royals to my humble abode, wise Hermit? Our daughter Goldina is turning into gold. Can you help us? Ah, gold, the root of your woe. Melt your treasures. Let them sink in the sea. But can it bring back Goldina's true form? A certain path, uncertain outcome, yet a step in the right direction. But I'm proud of my wealth, Hermit. Can we not save Goldina without parting with it? A dilemma of the heart, King. Our daughter overpowers all treasures. What must we do? Cast off the golden shackles. Let love shine brighter than gold. A great donkey indeed, but Goldina shall not bear the brunt of it. To cure her, send her to the island of the Crystal Mountains. Will that bring back her natural self, dear Hermit? Three years on the glass hills shall do the trick, but beware! She must never glimpse her reflection in the glass mountains. We shall make it so. Thank you. Well, so the next morning, the king and queen prepare for Goldina's journey. Ready the strongest ship we have. Goldina's restoration is at stake. A journey to Crystal Mountains? How thrilling! Remember, child, never look at your reflection in the glass mountains. Your restoration depends on it, Goldina. No looking, I promise. Hold tight, men! We're almost there. I wonder what the glass mountains look like. Remember your promise, dear. Resist the urge, Goldina. Right. 
No looking at reflections. We have arrived, Princess. Time to restore my rosy self. This is truly enchanting. But remember, no reflections. Not even a peek, Goldina. I won't forget. As time passes, Goldina embraces her new surroundings with a determination to resist the allure of her own reflection. Two years pass in a jiffy. Goldina, her governess and nurse, have lived on the island. Two years here, and my skin must surely be coming back. I bet. All thanks to your diligence, dear. I must add, with all the temptation around us, we've managed well. Another year, and we will be back home. The king sends the captain to bring news of how his daughter Goldina is doing. My, my, how you've all changed. Changed? What do you mean? Well, you're not golden anymore. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, nothing. Just an observation. You look as radiant as ever, my dear. I'm curious, though. After the captain leaves, the thought of their appearances starts to intrigue them. Why shouldn't we take a peek in the glass mountains just once to see how far we've come? Don't even think about it, Goldina. A little look wouldn't hurt. Goldina and the nurse sneak out downstairs, determined to see their reflection. Just a quick peek. Won't hurt anyone. Where do you think you two are going? Oh dear, vanity won't solve anything. You're right, governess. Now back to bed, both of you. Yes, governess. The third year is almost about to pass, but Goldina, the nurse, and the governess, now all three, have fallen into the trap of vanity. Just one little look won't hurt, right? Maybe just a peek. Well, if you both are... Alas, they venture to the glass mountains, mesmerized by their reflections. Oh, I look splendid. <laughs> I must admit, I'm looking rather lovely too. It's hard to look away, isn't it? Days turn into weeks as they lose themselves in their own reflections. The ship arrives to take them back home. Oh no! You're like glass! What do you mean? You become as fragile as glass, my dears! What have we done? Vanity led us astray! The captain does his best. Goldina is carefully wrapped in cotton wool to protect her from breaking. We must find a solution. Our precious Goldina. No, this is absurd. We must find a remedy. Our dear daughter Goldina. Upon the kind request of the queen, the hermit comes to the palace. There's but one path left. Send her to the woolly land under the earth. Is there no other way? None, your majesty. In the land of wool, she must dwell among sheep. And what must she do there? Spend wool for three years in clothes of wool, as she lives amidst the bleating masses. But there's more, isn't there? Indeed, beware the allure of silk and satin. Touch them not, or calamity shall follow. The king and queen plan a daring expedition to find the hidden woolly land. Your majesties, this journey is fraught with challenges. Our love for Goldina outweighs the peril. The captain returns with the news of their quest. Majesty, we found it. The woolly land under the earth. Tell us, how do we reach it? 
A mountain's peak conceals the path, a hole leading deep below. Ropes shall guide the way. Goldina, now dressed in wool, spins with the woolly sheep. There wasn't much to do in this woolly world. They had one job, to spin wool and sing songs. And they forgot all about their pretty looks, and all about gold, and fine dresses, and vanity. Unbeknownst, they got their old looks back again and were no longer like glass. One day, when the three years were nearly over, Goldina, who always said what she thought, cried out, I wonder how we've changed after all this time. Wouldn't it be lovely to see the sun again? Goldina, such thoughts are frivolous. Just concentrate on your spinning. She's right. But the governess herself quietly sneaks past the shadowy landscape while Goldina and the nurse get busy spinning. Just a little peek. Well, hello, sunshine. The governess admires the vibrant world. She is drawn to silk dresses and jewels hanging from trees. Nature's boutique, it seems. Harmonious birds? Bah, bah. Woolly wisdom, perhaps? Bah, bah. Ba, ba. What do you want, huh? Bah, bah. Gosh. Never have I seen such pretty jewels. Well, if I'm going to try this silk... After a while, the nurse, suspicious of the governess's absence, investigates. She follows down the same path as the governess, gets lured by the sunlit world beyond the horizon. At the glimpse of the dazzling jewels and silk dresses hanging from the tree, she too gives into temptation. Oh, and the poor sheep bleats and mourns her too. The nurse ignores his plead. Whoa, what is this ple- And she too meets the same fate. Left alone in the woolly wilderness, Goldina starts to panic about her companions. The woolly sheep follows her. After a weary trek, she too reaches the sunlit opening colorful birds, fluttering butterflies, and gorgeous silk and satin dresses adorned with jewels lure her. Goldina faces a more tempting choice. Oh, those silken dresses! Bah! Bah! This time, Goldina's gaze lingers on the treasures. Bah! Bah! A beautiful bird offers Goldina a dress but she hears the woolly sheep buying behind her. Suddenly, the woolly sheep is transformed into a handsome prince. Greetings, princess. I am Prince Pachinko. The woolly sheep is a prince? That savage bird you just wrestled to the ground is indeed a wicked enchanter. He trapped me here. You, brave Goldina, have shattered his malevolent spell. I couldn't have done it without you, because you saved me first. Ah, a few magical breaths can mend even the deepest of wounds. Incredible! Let me take you home, Princess Goldina, shall we? Yes, my magical prince. And now we can say they lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>